Kodak used to be the biggest name in photography, not one of the biggest, the biggest. If you come across an old photograph, particularly one taken around the 1970s, there's a really high chance that it was taken with a Kodak camera, using Kodak film, and developed on Kodak paper, using Kodak technology. They were the absolute leader of the entire industry, yet, in 2012, they went bankrupt. I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression, they do still exist today in a very different and much smaller capacity. But you can't deny, they've experienced a pretty massive decline, from extremely profitable to bankrupt, from king of the industry to what they are today. So what happened? Most people would just call them Kodak, though many know them by their full name, Eastman Kodak, which was started by two guys named, you guessed it, George Eastman and Henry Strong. You thought I was gonna say Kodak there. Kodak actually isn't the name of a person, like you may think. Does anyone know where the name Kodak comes from? I would give you a second to think, but you wouldn't come up with it. It doesn't mean anything. George Eastman just thought it was a good sounding name. He saw it as a unique word that's hard to mispronounce, plus he just liked the letter K. It just shows how names don't always need to have meaning, sometimes it just has to sound good. Kodak. Yeah sounds pretty good. It was originally the name of his camera, but then he decided to make it the name of the entire business. And this was back in the late 1800s when he came up with this name, and really George Eastman is the man to focus on when we're talking about Kodak. Henry Strong was more of an investor. See, before Kodak, Photography was a pain. It involved big, heavy cameras. You would have to quickly develop the pictures, which meant you had to keep all those heavy supplies nearby. I'll admit, I'm not an expert on 19th century photography, but I do know that 20th century photography was much easier, and that's because of George Eastman. He made all these innovations that made photography available to the general public. In the beginning, the company's slogan was, you press the button, we do the rest which I know today doesn't sound very impressive, but in the late 1800s, I'm sure that sounded like magic. You buy the camera, take a bunch of pictures, send in the whole thing to Kodak, and they send you the pictures. Now, with a product that's so much better than anything else on the market, it's easy to see how they became so big. And they didn't just rely on their early success, they kept going. Notably, in 1935, Kodachrome, it's a specific type of film used for color images. Paul Simon even used it is the name of one of his popular songs. I found this interesting. To process the film, it was a complicated, expensive process, so Kodak would sell the film with the cost of the processing built in, which forced everyone to get it processed by Kodak. In 1954, there was a legal ruling that said it was unfair to the others who were willing to process the film and said they couldn't bundle the cost of the film and the processing. After that, the price of the film went way down. In 2009, Kodak stopped making it altogether, which says something about the decline of Kodak at that time and the decline of film and how the two may be related. Kodachrome was just one of many significant ways Kodak contributed to the industry. I already said that in the 1970s, Kodak was practically synonymous with photography. In 1976, they had an 85% market share in cameras and 90% market share in film. They were so dominant that it was unfair to the competitors. They had a great marketing campaign too, with the term Kodak moment. It was used to refer to any moment worthy of a photo. Someone gets married, that's a Kodak moment. You get a new car, that's a Kodak moment. Anything you want to remember. People tend to take photos at emotional times, and Kodak found a perfect way to capitalize on that. With that little two-word phrase, people associated the Kodak brand with life's meaningful moments. This was a very successful campaign. If you're too young to remember it, go ask someone who's older. They'll know all about it. Everything was so good for so long with Kodak, and we still have the question of how did they fall so far? Here's a graph I made showing their sales for the 20 years leading up to their bankruptcy. You could see that things weren't exactly perfect for any part of it. They had some troubles throughout the 90s but it wasn't anything severe enough to lead to a bankruptcy. It looks like the period where things got really bad started in 2005, and when we look at the graph for net income, 
we can draw the same conclusions. Now, I'm sure when you first saw the title of this video, your first thought was digital cameras. And now that I show you these graphs, it's just confirming what you already thought. And I'll go one step further. This graph shows the sales of film and digital cameras. The digital cameras crept up in sales over this time, overtaking the film cameras for the first time in 2003. And by maybe 2005 or 2006, they were dominating the market. So it would make perfect sense that the film company Kodak would start to have some massive issues starting around 2005. And I agree. I agree with all of it but it's not as simple as it may seem. The picture we like to paint here is a ridiculous one. It's that in the 1990s when digital cameras were on the rise, Kodak ignored it. And only once it was undeniable that digital cameras were the way of the future is when they finally made a desperate attempt to switch over. But it was too late. Others beat them to it. Is that what you were picturing? Is that basically what you expected this video to say? Because that's not what happened. You have to give Kodak a little more credit. Do you know who invented the digital camera? It was Kodak. In 1975, Steve Sasson, who worked for Kodak, invented the digital camera. Three years later, Kodak received a patent for it. Throughout the 90s, when digital cameras were on the rise, Kodak was selling digital cameras. They didn't ignore them. In 2005, remember 2005, the year everything went bad? Do you know who was the leader in the US digital camera market? It was Kodak. At this point, I'm sure you're confused. I sound like I'm contradicting myself. First I say the digital camera killed Kodak, and then I say Kodak was big in the digital cameras. It's a complicated issue. Many people have studied it and delivered different conclusions. But what I'm giving here is the conclusion that makes the most sense to me, and most of it happens to be the more common conclusion. Kodak didn't focus on digital cameras enough. They didn't ignore them, but they didn't give them their full attention either. They treated them as more of a side project. Really, they underestimated just how big they would get. And how could the biggest camera company of all time fail to see where the industry was headed? To that, I say it was a blind optimism. Here, think of your local sports team. Go outside and ask some fans what they think of their chances for next year. They'll talk about how they just got this new player that's going to turn things around, or how they just got rid of a player that was keeping them down. They'll say, next year is gonna be our year. And then go travel somewhere else and ask someone what they think of that same team. I doubt that other person would have such a positive outlook. Same case with Kodak. Just like the sports fan, they want wanted something to be true so bad, they started believing it was true. They ignored the facts and saw what they wanted to see. They were motivated to believe that digital cameras weren't the future. Let me explain why they were so motivated to believe this. For one, they knew about film. They were experts. They had a hundred years of experience. They perfected all the processes, even invented most of them. They were producing some of the best stuff at the cheapest prices and had one of the most trusted names of any industry. And film is how they made their money. They hardly made any money from the camera sales. They would just give away the cameras if they needed to. Those were just things people needed to have before they would buy their film and the prints. With digital cameras, no film, and in many cases, no prints. The thing that made them very little money was becoming the only thing people wanted. For Kodak, digital cameras becoming the industry standard was very bad. So they were motivated to ignore the signs and not give the digital cameras the focus they needed. Now, I said Kodak was the market leader in 2005, but it wasn't by much. They were no longer untouchable, they were now competing, just like everyone else. By 2010, they had a 7.4% global market share, behind Canon, Sony, Nikon, Samsung, and Panasonic. They were making a switch into consumer printers, but that just forced them to compete with HP and others that were more well-known in that industry. And plus, consumer printers probably wasn't the most forward-thinking move they could have made anyway. It all led to their 2012 bankruptcy. As I said, they came out of the bankruptcy and still exist today in a much different way. They deal with other technologies. They call themselves a global commercial printing and imaging company. Their revenues are much smaller and still decreasing 
increasing each year. 2016 was their first profitable year, so I suppose that's a move in the right direction. But effectively, and in everyone's minds, Kodak has failed. And I struggle to think what they should have done differently. In 1975, when Steve Sasson invented that digital camera, their response was to keep it quiet, hope it never gets big because then their film sales would suffer, while the better response would have been to embrace it. In the same way that they had a jump start on everyone else with the film camera in the 1800s, they could have had another jump start, but they let it slip away. They were slow about it, but even if they had handled the situation better, where would they be today? Everyone has a really good camera on their phone, so the digital camera business isn't exactly where you would want to be either. Maybe in a different reality, all of our phones would be made by Kodak. That'd be weird. Maybe we can change the way we perceive Kodak. Sure, they made some mistakes and today are just a shell of their former selves, but they had a good run. They revolutionized an industry and led that industry for a hundred years. They did some great things for photography and maybe it was just their time to go. What they did best? was no longer needed. In today's world, it'd be impossible for them to exist in the same way. Down the line, I'd like to think they'll be remembered for their century of success and innovation and not their decades of struggle. Let me know in the comments, do you look at Kodak any differently after watching this? Do you agree with what I said about the reasoning behind their decline? There's many opinions out there, but most of them don't stray too far from what I presented. Other potential aspects of this include a lack of communication from upper to lower management, a mindset that they control the industry and people will switch to digital when they say it's time, and just a false sense of security. They felt untouchable when clearly they weren't. I recommend you do some further research if you want to hear more about any of those. It's a deep subject. This video could have gone on for an hour, but I tried to keep it to the more important parts and the core of the problem. Don't be surprised if you see more about Kodak on this channel in the future. But for now, let me know where they went wrong. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.